Let me know if you can hear me okay. And I will share this. I'm going to do a little carpool like, like I did last night, bring in a little energy, a little clearing, maybe a little message for whoever would like it. We are just after our Star Tribes of Light little meeting, private meeting, which was full of healing and amazing shares and information. And um, my battery is going to be too low. Who's live? Who's on? You're joining me again. <laughs> You're here yet again. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome. Katrina, hi, sweetheart. How are you, darling? Sun kissed. Yeah, I don't tend to lie in the sun too much because I'm so uh, white. <laughs> I just burn. But this is a couple of color uh, with the sun. And today was piss and rain. So uh, it kind of eased off earlier on. But it's nice now. Hello, Joe. Hi, Nula. How are you doing? You can hear me perfect. And I'm going to share this into Star Tribes of Light. Please join Star Tribes of Light if you haven't yet. That is our group. It's a collective where we do free um, transmissions every month. Um, a lot of the people in there are just working from Pure Heart Space and they're here to help and assist anybody with questions and to bring through their, the language of light as well. You know, we do a lot of content in that space. Mm. I don't know, maybe somebody can help me and actually share that because I don't know if it's going to work right now. Feminine, I have got two dragon, three dragon decks. I've got, no, three divine feminine, three dragon. I have transcendent journey. I haven't really used that one. Maybe somebody would like that, a card from that. Maybe post what you'd like a card pulled from below as well. You know, if you want a Transcendent Journey card, let me know. If you'd like a Magdalene Oracle, let me know. If you'd like Diana Cooper Dragon, let me know. A Mother Mary, let me know. If you would like one of Gage Singh's Dragon, let me know. Okay, so I'm gonna, as, I'm, as you're typing, I'm going to share this in Star Tribes. I have 1% battery in my phone now. Fingers crossed this works. Star Tribes of Light. <laughs> share. Share. It worked. It worked. Okay. Leaving the 1% battery to the side now. So, Bernadette, pain in the body. Are you going through a lot of symptoms right now? Is this got to do with ascension symptoms? Is it a cleansing, a purging, a release? Pain in the body. Is it something that's chronic? or in the last month, two months, three months, four months kind of a thing. Is it joint, like sporadic joint? Is it continuous? So I'm just asking questions to feel in. Sometimes when we ask questions out loud, we kind of get a, a feeling of true or not true with the body. So instantly as you're asked that question, I felt my root tighten. I realized what my body's doing as I'm asking the question. So, new new got kind of tight now what that represents to me is when I tighten up down there it's usually there's a fear right I'm not safe to fully be to fully express I'm not safe in the body or on earth maybe sometimes it's got to do with money stuff too manifestation it could be even um, sexual trauma stuff as well or uh, that doesn't just mean in your life it could be that there's stuff coming up in the maternal paternal lines as well like you could be clearing this feels more like a not safe energy as I'm talking about it out loud. And as I'm doing that, I have tension in my jaw. So often the jaw and the pelvic area for women are connected. Um, I do a lot of work, somatic work with this in my light language groups, um, my light language workshops, um, because why do we need to do so much somatic work on this as women? Um, part of this is linked into our reclaiming our voice, reclaiming our bodies, okay, really becoming embodied. This here is also anything that's been repressed um, that can be coming up to the surface. And sometimes things like that that are repressed, we might even consciously, it could be unconscious, 
that's coming up is something that was repressed for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve year old person, you know, as a kid or whatever. It could even be that you weren't permitted to express your full anger. This is really common. I'm doing a general thing here now when I'm saying this. Like as women in general, um, depending even on our culture or our social status or our religion or whatever, however we're brought up, uh, you know, women, you don't express your anger. That's totally not cool, you know. So often a lot of us we swallow it down and it tends to filter right down into that yoni space I was talking about as well. Um, but it gets up in here then, right? So grinding of the teeth, tensioning of the jaw, because this is also linked into our expression. Like the full embodied parts of ourselves, what needs and want to be expressed. So I'm going to invite you to like soften the jaw, open, and there you can do this. These are just resetting the system, massage the jaw. Right, and breathe in. You're gonna breathe like that, and then you're gonna do some horse lips, right? We're gonna do some horse lips. You're gonna breathe, you're gonna soften down there, and you're gonna breathe through this. Now, if you find that difficult, this tension in the lips, and here, that's if people like like actually can't do that, there's tension. It'd be like that, right? So if you're doing this good, that's grand, it means you're starting to open up. So breathe, soften the shoulders and make some sound now as you're sounding feel the vibration right and bring it down to the cervix you want that sounding right the tone to go down vibration down to the cervix softening the urethra softening the vaginal canal and perineum back passage ah again and one more time if anybody's feeling themselves getting dizzy with this again that's like resetting in the system I need to breathe inside breathe inside notice is one shoulder more up than the other and today I have my you can feel the left feels higher. Left is the feminine, protecting the feminine. Ich amo su yeki in defense. Uhana ma yeki in protection. So releasing that, and you can stretch that out. You do these little exercises brings us from out here back into the body. And often we move pain. We don't want to be in the body when we're pain, because it can feel more intense. Sometimes it's bringing that inness to kind of go, okay, what is this pain mean? Where am I feeling it right now? Let me breathe into it. Touch it. Where's the pain? Is it in the hips? Is it in the shoulder? Is it in the heart? Is it in the gut? Like, breathe into that. Soften the jaw as you're doing it. Soften the yoni. Is the pain hot? Is the pain cold? So you're kind of feeling as i'm speaking you can do this right is the pain hot is it cold if it was to have a shape is it smooth or jagged you're breathing does it have a color if it was to have a color what color would it be right so you're kind of identifying it you're giving it almost structure and then you're going to speak to it when we speak to the pain we get into the root of what it is and therefore it can be transmuted without wahyani or at least lessened right so if we're on an intensity scale of one to ten ten being the most painful one being the least where are you on that scale and then you'll come back okay what was the intensity of that if that pain was to have a feeling what feeling would it be right now is it sad is it tight and constricted is it burning hot angry ferocious is it backstabbing, like a stabbing pain, right? So it's like you're asking, you're feeling, you're breathing. And just acknowledge it, place your hand where it is and say, okay, I feel you pain right now. I breathe into you. I soften down the only space into you. What is it you need, pain? And the pain will have a voice. Maybe it's your voice. Maybe it's someone else. Maybe it has its own face, a man or a woman, a male or female. 
is atrium. Breathe in. Sometimes it can feel more intense as we speak to it. That's okay, that means we're getting there, right? Muk an al hati. How long have you been here, pain? Unnoticed, unacknowledged. A long time or a short time? Let's breathe into that. I feel you. I'm sorry if you've been here a long time. I'm sorry if you've been here a short time. What do you need? And breathe into the, the need. You might get a word, a sense, a feeling, an emotion. Oh, you're breathing, you're softening. You're listening into the body. We hear you, body. What are you telling me? What is your wisdom? What wisdom does this pain have right here, right now, for me? What do you want me to hear, pain? I'm listening. And soften. And just breathe in, receive it on the breath. Now, if you're getting I don't know, you're going to breathe into I don't know. Now, this is a process if you, you know, I work with people one to one, but you can often get a lot of this on your own as well, right? See if whatever needs and wants to happen for you, we're going to get on that. I'm going to card and bring through a transmission. Now I am getting the words unacknowledged. This card's jumped out. So this is your card. Oh. What has been acknowledged needs and wants to be acknowledged to be transformed. First step is breathing, softening, breathe and receive yourself, and then acknowledge it. That's the first step in all most healing modalities, okay? A lot of what's been not been seen, not been heard, not been met, it's in the darkness. And it can cause pain to bring our attention to it so that we see it, we hear it, we feel it, we acknowledge it, and when we acknowledge it, something that needs one to happen can happen. A need can be met. Forgiveness, uh, love, brought back in if it's been you know, expelled out. If it's been rejected, it's brought home. So there's all these kind of little things. Ho'oponopono is brilliant for that, and I love you, me. Ru'a the freedom card, is what has been pulled. What has been entrapped or enslaved, whether it's an emotion, that's been suppressed, it wants to be free. Whether it's a thought pattern that's creating an enslavement program, a belief that's keeping us stuck in a certain loop, right? Or a belief structure that's suffering or painful to us, that's not really aligned with our truth, that wants to be free. So that's what this pain is bringing us. It is a gift, it's not comfortable. And I really, really do get it. I had chronic pain. I understand uh, in the way that I can is what I wanna say. So a holistic approach, what intensifies the pain mean? And you might get a sense of what that is. Is it being in a certain place, situation, being with a person? Is it eating a certain food, right? It could be a trigger thing. Is it when I'm maybe forgetting to come back to myself and maybe I'm giving out all the time and the pain amplifies and expands to bring me home again? to make me acknowledge that I need more self-care. Like there's lots of little things and I'm just kind of playfully throwing words out. See what feels, what lands. If you feel that you would like a session on this, just contact me, I'll, I'll, I'll do one with you, okay? I'm not taking out too many new clients. But Bernda, if you're feeling that, just let me know. Otherwise, see what's happening now. I'm gonna do a little transmission. I'm going to feel into you with your permission and I'm just going into your nervous system first. So it's the nervous system from like all the way down here down to the whole body. And the nervous system overwhelm can misfire communication patterns within the body. So nerve pain. It can also tighten muscles, right, that can create pain in the body, uh, tendons, ligaments, joints, uh, colon, intestines, can maybe not work as it needs to. So the elimination systems, which means you can get like our toxins can build up and toxins in the body then can kind of create inflammation as well. And this can be from undigested emotional stuff, undigested trauma, 
um, can create a bit of block in the systems at a physical level because everything has a, everything's linked like energy, emotion, thoughts, what we put in the body, what we get out of the body, the environment we're in, like nothing is separate, everything is connected. And sometimes it's that type of like, we need a little bit of everything to bring it into homeostasis and harmony. So listen to yourself. Your greatest wisdom is within you and you are a topped in being, Bernadette. In fact, much of your wisdom resides within your body. You are, and I'm going to say this, I need you to feel it if it's true for you. Everything I say, please take it with a grain of salt, like a water off a duck's back. If it doesn't resonate, let it go. Don't attach to it. If it resonates, breathe it in. Let it feel, let it sit, let it simmer. And feel what, what, you know, is it good? Is it this, is it that? Let that sink in. If it doesn't, just let it off, okay? Empath. So clear empathy as a gift, clear sentience as a gift. Clear empathy is, let's say you walk into a room. This came up last night, remember that? And you get a sense of an energy. Let's say, let's pretend somebody had an argument in a room. You walk into the room. You have a knowing that an aggro happened here, right? There's a density, a feeling, a sense, a knowing. That's one aspect of a gift, right? Clairsentience is when you walk into the room, but you physically feel it hit you in your body, okay? You physically feel the anger, you get the knot in the stomach, you get the tension in the shoulders. That's clairsentience. So clear empathy is like you have the sense, the knowing of what's gone down. Clear sentience is you physically have it embodied within you. It's a very powerful gift. It's one of my major ones, okay? However, when we're learning about that, when we're clearing our own selves on our healing journeys, this gift can create a little sense of overwhelm because we feel so much. And often those of us that feel so much, our go-to to protect us, especially as children when we weren't shown or taught how to, to maybe embody this in a way, and you know, I wasn't, I can tell you that, we shut down, we disassociate because we have to, otherwise it's like <clears throat> things blow, right? Often. Uh, when this happens, this this overwhelm or this overloading, and in this can occur in the body as well as a presentation. And all the emotions are water and it's filling, 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 and then you get the overspill. You might get sick and this is like, okay, now I go to bed and now I rest. And now the water can kind of drip out and then when I feel somewhat okay, I'm back in and again, I'm taking it again. So sometimes it can come at us that way. Everybody's different by the way, but this is an example of a program I had and how I would deal with my clairsentience. Uh, I manifested quite a lot of illnesses, quite a lot of surgeries in my life, um, to the point of that and practically dying. Like, you know, I was pretty near death and had to make a choice in that moment, that was 2016, make a choice to live or to die, to be in this body or to not be in this body, to learn how my body worked, right? Um, to understand what it is to be fully present and to understand my power and everybody has this nobody is not special with this everybody has this the power to self-heal the power to listen to my body and understand how my body works because my body is different to yours your body is different to somebody else because nobody can tell you they can play with the feeling of what might be for you but you this is your journey right of embodiment this is the biggest journey for all of us I'm going to say I might say all of us but for me and a lot of people I work with this is our biggest journey is learning how to embody into the physical and still be the authentic true fully connected in the gifts the power of all that we be because we have the power to heal and activate self-healing within us self-healing doesn't just look like you know it can be look like a miracle for a lot of people and i have worked with people that have instant miracles and healing frequencies i've had that i've seen that i've witnessed that but sometimes for many of us on the journey it's a process it's a journey process we listen we do a step we listen we do a step we listen we do a step sometimes it's that it's a bit longer for some of us okay um <laughs> that's also a miracle right and sometimes it's the holistic approach I mentioned. Yes, instant miracles can happen and somebody's 100% healed within a minute. But some of it, we need the lessons to embody the lessons so that we also show and tell others, right? And that's my journey. 
I've also experienced instant healing as well. So I'm not going to say I haven't. I have. But I'm just saying this out loud, Bernadette, because when you're a clairsentient, I'm feeling this if this is true for you. Sometimes we even have difficulty in identifying emotion and feeling in the body. We feel something, but we're not really sure because we've been so used to maybe numbing or repressing or disassociating, or maybe it's been, we've been told that's, you don't express that kind of thing. It's kind of like, you know, suck it in and keep on going forward. Um, so notice if those programs are there, like, you know, I've got, I'm, I'm, you know, I keep moving even though I'm in pain. Undo myself. So listen into your body on that. Uh, safety is coming back in. I keep saying safety, safety, safety. When you feel safe in your environment, when you feel safe in your body, when you feel safe in the being that is you, that is a major key for you in your journey. So what does it take for you to feel safe? Where do you not feel safe? What are the fears around safety? So I feel there's something with safety right now that's coming up to the forefront. And as a clairsentience, if other people feel unsafe around us, we can take that in as our own and not understand that it's not all ours. Yes, we probably have our own stuff. But as clairsentience, we also take on everybody else's. Okay. So this is another way that the glass can, can fill right up to the top. So it's not like maybe yours is here, your shit that you're working on, but then you're taking on moms, dads, uncles, aunts, brothers, sisters, friends, colleagues, work colleagues, the actual entire collective, because as clairsentience, you can be totally transmuting. I think it came up that you were a transmuter last night as well. Again, feeling that's true or not true. Um, and we, we as beings, as we incarnate in many, many lifetimes, we may have helped people, helped collective, just be a giving nature. Do you have a giving nature? Do you like to help people? Um, you know, are you kind of there as somebody that people lean on? Um, sometimes it can be mental, emotional, physical. You could be a practical person. It doesn't always have to look any one way, but yet there's a givingness in you. And in that givingness, sometimes there's a taking on to, to alleviate others' pain. We have a belief that whether it's unconscious or conscious, it's not like we're saying, let me take your pain. It can be just a natural thing. You're sitting with someone and it's coming through. So I'm just saying that because is that also something that's happening? I'm saying is complete BS, by the way. So I want you to feel into your own truth with this. That'll also be a major part of your journey. It is not what Mary says or what Andrea says or what John Malloy says. It's what Bernadette gets, right? As her truth. And that's the key here. It's about you learning about how you listen to yourself, what your body's telling you, what your emotions are expressing to you so that you're moving and transmuting and having that self-healing journey that's delicious, glorious, and sometimes so freaking challenging. But there's also that beauty and that joy and that, that lightness that comes with it too. Okay? Okay. So your card is the freedom card. So I in ourselves where we press down uh, and ringing and embodying in a, the freedom codes. Is that is that permissible? Permissible now, please, for the collective. Yes, it is. Thank you. So I need to breathe in as you're going to receive this. It's just an energetic signature. It's already within you. Just as you hear the sounds, the energy is in the sounding. And it's just going to come into the field and you'll say yes or you'll say no as you wish to receive it because it's already within you. It's just helping us remember. This is what this is doing. It's helping you remember all that you be. Ooh, 
Akın seyram sa, vuşu teyma, la 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 eru. Uuuu, nam zannım şit at uya. Self-doubt of your own ability and yourself. We had arachnid and there was a ishimnara around the webbing. Nariyashi, uh, is that cleared? So yeah, that's cleared. Um, oh, yeah, so your connection to land is really important. Let's come through again. Hello, dear. Where do you live? Uh, what land are you on? That's really um, a big connection point for you in your grounding and your healing. Uh, grounding, healing, centeredness, connectedness. The land will be key. And no wonder the dragons are coming through because, again, dragons and, and land, physicality, and that. That's important on your journey, Bernadette. And we're going to leave it there because there's some codings that still are landing. They're up here. There was also a restructuring between, and this is the freeze, fight, flight response. So the central nervous system coming back into harmony. I would advise vagal um, exercises to keep resetting that system to bring you into the parasympathetic rest and digest. The body heals in that way okay the body heals at rest digest anywhere there's a fight faint uh fawn um any of those uh, response shock and we can get into that multiple times a day okay so i reset multiple times a day because that can happen as a clairsentience as well because you can take on a lot of other people's stuff we don't even know it so i reset quite regularly i just do it naturally right now so i would google uh, vagal exercises and do a couple of them. That's my advice for you. If you want something free, that's free. Like you can go online and do that on YouTube. There's loads out there. Um, if you wanted to, like I do uncover a lot of this stuff as well on um, 
light language beginners workshop stuff. So a lot of stuff on regulating our nervous systems is incredibly important as we go into our awakening and self healing process. Uh, so, so we just need little simple tools. There you go. So that's Bernadette out for you. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. Welcome, Amanda. Hello, Nula, Katrina, and Haley, and Pamela. Habdi Abdi, Pamela, Mother Mary, or Magdalene. I'm just going to go intuitively to people because, again, anything that's coming through is for the collective. If I pull for you, you're resonating, it's for you. And that's what's coming through. Ashin Bia, Yatana. There's a ray that you're working with right now, Pamela. A ray. When I say a ray, it's a color or frequency. And it is connected to the Christ of Consciousness. What color, if you were to close your eyes right now, Pamela, breathe into the body, receive your own knowingness, what color do you sense right now? Maybe it's more than one, maybe it's one. And just type it in the box below. This ray, this frequency is connected into a healing ability that is becoming more and more open, untapped, more expressed. This healing ray also contains the codes of part of your purpose work. This healing ray, it's also a connector. This ray is also about entering into empowerment in your is there a better word for leadership ability? Is there a better word for like stepping into um, your fuller, deeper expression, but also as a guide for others? Does that make sense? I'm trying to find languaging for this. Interesting. So I'm going to check and see what Ray you just said. So hopefully you're still here. <laughs> Pamela, Pamela, red, purple ish color. Okay. So we have the red there anyway. Red being the color of. And red and purple together mixed is almost violet as well. Sometimes you get like when you mix them both, it becomes more of a violet color. So you also have the violet rays. There's a couple of, um, and you within a ray, you can have many rays overlaying, and that creates a unique frequency. And people would like you'll have your own unique frequency ray that you'll work with as well. The word I'm getting right now is embodiment of your divine nature, embodiment of your divine nature, embodiment of your divine nature. Hmm. This uh, being, what is coming through is Dakini, Dakini essence. Dakini is divine feminine. And there's a lot of movement and dance She's showing me uh, mudras. Okay, so your mudras coming through in your light language are linked in when you're doing this kind of thing with your hands, Pamela. This is linked into your Dakini frequency energy. Oh, 
That is the card you pulled, Pamela, but there's quite a lot of energy come through with the Dakini frequency. Now, this is a major divine feminine embodiment aspects that are connected to you that you've either been as a part of a collective or as an individual. There's an aspect of that Dakini. I can't even open my eyes. Can you see this? Like, it's so strong. I'm finding hard to talk right now. <sighs> the body movement, mudras, uh, dance in your language of light, because Pamela, was, she's part of my, uh, she was in my workshop with light language and our light language activated so this is why i'm referencing this for her i know she speaks light language there's a deeper embodiment with the body and bringing your light language to the body but also your hand mudras right now hand mudras particularly trusting around the movement the movement and the placing in of energy so decoding and coding okay coding and decoding with hand mudras but also this is an embodiment aspect as you're creating mudras, you're aligning specific meridian points and energy centers within your field of consciousness around you and within you. Through this, she will birth a further aspect of herself. Whoa, Pamela. Who's that coming through? Yeah, so am I Yishi. I am part of the divine council that accompanies Pamela on her journey right now. What the I'm taking out the Asofti. You want me to take out the being Amaratu that I am speaking of. So I am going to bring forth that energy now. Asu. This will be not just for Pamela, some of the rest of you listening will be also resonating with what I am saying. Amat Urasu is the goddess of light. She's the goddess of light. Now I can talk. Whew, okay, can you see that? Until I referenced her, she wasn't let me be. She is the goddess of light. She says, we are all sacred mirrors reflecting back the same light. She embodies the levity that brings us out of the darkness and shows us the beauty of our own light. She's the most powerful deity in the Shinto religion. She's a solar goddess of Japanese mythology and her name means shining in heaven. You have a big connection to this energy frequency, Pamela. The oldest legend date back to the eighth century and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about her story because it's absolutely beautiful. The story is that Amaterasu got in a fight with her brother. Okay, this is the story. God of the storms and of the sea. And his violent made her, her his violent nature made her feel so upset and angry that she retreated into a cave, leaving the world in darkness because she was the sun, she was the light. And she went into a cave. The world was in darkness because she forgot that she was the light. Okay, she went into a cave. We all retreat into the cave now and again. Who hasn't? Right, including myself. And I, I remember hearing this story while I was in the cave and I needed that story to be said. So take it in. If any of us are in that dark night of the soul, if any of us are feeling in that dark space, I feel like maybe there's not a light within or around us or outside of us. I want you to breathe in now. These little beings, the kami they were called, they're like little elemental beings that saw the fight unfold and they saw her go into the cave and they missed the light, they missed her. So they decided, what do we do to get her out of the cave, right? They're like, what do we do? So they got a mirror and they put it at the front of the cave. And a mirror is a reflection, right? It reflects back what it sees and they started laughing at this and being merry trying to attract her to come to the mouth come out from the depths of the inner cave and come to the mouth have a look and so she got curious and she peeked outside the cave 
O Shannon Digia Shibdia Mashupia Ganaman. And she, she saw the vision of the dawn. She saw the vision of the dawn. And it took her breath away. It took her breath away, this vision that she saw as she peeked her head out. And little did she know that she was looking at her own reflection, the beauty of all that she is. And with all that merriment and laughter and the encouragement she got from those little elementals, her depression lif lifted and she decided to leave the cave and bring light back into the world. She realized as she looked in the mirror that she was the light and it was never gone. And that by her denying her own light in the cave, staying stuck in the cave, she was denying the world, the dawn. So sometimes we need to realize and feel and sense that we too are that dawn. Right? We need to breathe into that sometimes, that even in the darkest night of our soul, Sometimes we just need to hear or feel or sense that others have our back, right? And they're showing the mirror of our true selves to us. So uh, just feel into that. And she, like the cave is essential for us. It's not wrong to go into the cave. We have cycles of moving in and moving out of the darkness into the light. It's all part of our evolutionary process. The cave is the introspection. The cave is the understanding of our nature, who we be. The cave is where we go to retreat, rest and restore so that we come back out greater, the greater sun, the greater dawn, the dawning of a new day, the rebirth, right? But if we stay in the cave, we're hiding. If we forget to come back out of the cave, and we stay in the darkness and the suffering, we can get lost in it. We forget that we're the light as well. We think that we are the dark sometimes, right? The beauty of Amaterasu is that she emerges from the cave out of curiosity. What if there is more light within me? What if, what if I am that dawn? You know, it's like this curiousness. We are all sacred mirrors reflecting back the same light. So that is part of that. And I'm going to just say Our Lady of Divine Presence was the Mother Mary card that was pulled. And that is number 14. Our Lady of Divine Presence. You are that presence is what she's saying for others. When others retreat to that cave and have forgotten their true light, you are the divine presence that holds the mirror up to them so that they may become curious and enter to the mouth of that cave and realize their true virtue, the truth of themselves. You reflect their light back onto them so they remember who they truly be. This is part of your gift. We wish to express this. And for you to remember this. So that's why they wanted me to say that to you. Own it. Own that within you. Now this also says, you have been preparing to receive me, opening your heart and clearing away past shame and doubt. You have been asking for the divine light to be with you. And I tell you now, I am alive within you. your wish to serve the world, to be blessed by my light so that you can assist others is granted. As you open your heart and mind to me, your very touch becomes my touch. Your loving gaze holds the light of my own eyes within it. My grace lives in you, flowing through you into the heart of the world. This card, this oracle comes to you in confirmation that you are opening up to living divine presence and it has is having an effect on you and your life. Perhaps you are at a point in your life when the path is opening up and taking you in a different direction to what you expected. Know that this is divinely orchestrated and should therefore be trusted and followed. 
Our Lady of Divine Presence, brings us an answer to all questions. She appears at a time when we are receiving more of the living divine and our bodies and our lives are changing as a result. The more we continue to surrender into her through trust, the more this can continue to unfold and the more her grace is given permission to flow into us and through us. This divine presence of Our Lady shows us what we were capable of bringing into the world. And this is healing energy into the world. When you allow yourself to trust and open your heart, it just flows. So I'm not going to read the rest of it. But to recognize that the Lady of Divine Presence, your light lives and dwells within you. And to just acknowledge that May the presence of the divine, may the presence of the divine touch every aspect of my life and all with whom I come into contact with, like a wave of golden love bathing the entire world with the divine consciousness of all that is. May that be a prayer for all of us now. Om Gurase Gurakara Sandevo Om Gurase Gurakama Sandevo Kyashanta Kawasi Shantar Nushat Bro Uranda Shafayata Om Abun the Bashmaya Ne Kadash Maha Abun the Bashmaya Ne Kadash Maha Niasi Amoswai. So there are the cards, Pamela, thank you for bringing that essence onto us. We are all sacred mirrors reflecting back the same light. Listen back to this because there's some stuff for you to do with the mudras and the dancing, that's the Dakini energy is big for you there to tap in and embody that it is a part of your frequency that you're bringing onto earth as well. Not just the divine presence, like it's it's that and more. Thank you, Pamela. <laughs> you're gorgeous. I love you. One more. Katrina, I can see you there, my darling. Transformation deck. So I'm going to go to the transformation deck. Um, instantly, drink more water than you're drinking is what's coming in. Um, and this is because whatever process that is underway within you, uh, cellularly, at the cellular level, is require, requiring the, the purity of the water, but the flushing out of whatever is there too. So um, you might be already drinking a lot, but it feels like a, add another glass or two is kind of what I'm getting the sense of. Um, I'm also getting the sense of sweating. So um, um, okay, there's literally something that wants to come out through the sweat and the water as well. So I don't know if you are sweating or if you need to do something to make you sweat more. Uh, this is part of what's coming in. It's weird, but Katrina, I'm just saying it. Shut up, that you should do it. Shut up, do it. Drum, 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 dr
drum with that sounding I just don't have a drum with me right so drumming as well oh, you want to go into a sweat lodge and drum I don't know Chris <laughs> I don't know Katrina but like that's this feeling the sense I'm getting drum 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 it feels like there's a journeying aspect with that sweating and the drumming Drum, 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 dre, drum. I have sure, Maya. Mujam, kia hor. Ndiki hasu, galam. There's a guide, a being. Uh, I see feathers in the hair. Uh, let's bring in that toning in. So there's two. Look for the portal, the Irish fairy. Look for the portal, the Irish fairy. Look for the portal. But also establish your own domain. So there's an element of boundaries, but also opening up. So sometimes if our boundaries are coming from a shielding effect, uh the permeability isn't there to open and expand greater because there's a shielding also stopping whatever's coming in but also stopping something coming out right so there's something around boundaries but it's there's another way is what i'm getting so whatever shielding or boundaries have been put up there's another way and you're being invited to step into that way and that will require trust, listening, maybe the sweat lodge with the drawing, I don't know, but I'm just saying out loud. It's another newer embodiment form aspect because deeper and greater and faster, faster, faster expansion needs wants to happen via the portal work, right? Shooting them ocean and recognize like all of our energy centers are portals, but we are also opening and accessing portals and channeling. I wonder if there's some type of protection spell that you've put up or has been put over you. I'm taking a little breath as I'm asking that. I'm wondering. I'm, yeah, but I need you to feel into that. Take whatever I say as a pinch of salt. You need to feel into your old truth in that. And I wonder if somehow that's also like, um, like we narrow the field of possibility uh how would i put that is sometimes it's like you know if you imagine our crown and it's super super open but it's open to everything right and we're like okay let me just close this up a bit so i have more control over it it also means that maybe a, gol a golf course analogy you are the whole golf course you're not just the hole that you have to get the golf ball into um the same thing for channeling like if we're trying to narrow and make it just one hole and you have to pitch the ball into that one hole it's a lot harder than saying you have the whole
and you're still establishing a domain. You still have boundaries. But is there another way? Is there another perspective? And you can see how she's staring out, looking at what other perspective is there? What else can I be open to? Am I focusing on just one ship on the ocean and following it? We're forgetting that there's a whole ocean with billions of ships on it. But if I'm only looking at one with one flag and that's, that's all that's got my attention, I'm not going to see all of the other ships on the ocean. You understand what I'm saying? You get what I'm, like there's something there in this. That's why I'm trying to find the languaging with this, Katrina. And what's in your highest good? with the barriers weakened, step out of the mundane reality of this world to experience something new and profound. intuition to find a gateway that feels safe so you can commune with the elementals you on the embodiment of boundary. It is an energetic signature that may be embodied into the physical field of the existence iteration that you be. The symbol of Sarah, the Mare, linked to the as the Mary, child of the Magdalene, is the anchor and the heart. Adaption to land, to peoples, to new situations is one of her gifts. Adapting to adventurous journeys. Feeling safe in change and adaption is what she's coming through to help you with. And an expansion of perception 
is needed to embody this greater adaption frequency. How does it relate to maybe something that's going to be worked through or has been worked through? Maybe this is literally a validation of already something you've done as well. Sometimes that's what comes through. Thank you for bringing that energy, that frequency in for people today. We need a taste of the Fae and the Elven and the She. How wonderful. We also had a taste of Sarah Lamar. Thank you, darling. Um, she shall have a man. Ah, aya, amaye, yamaye, ya shiva amaye. Yamaye, ua ni amaro, u in yamara. Is my signal dropping, my loves? Pamela, thank you so much. It resonated awesome. Your hands have been going like crazy. The dakini, oh my god, I'm really excited for you to access that dakini energy. It's so powerful. I mean, with Dakini energy, of divine expression, but also major womb work, Pamela. Whatever it is that you're going to be bringing through. Uh, also safety in the body and embodiment. And Yama Sokia. And the landing, decoding and coding frequencies that you have naturally that are coming up into your fore as an ability uh, with your language, with your sounding, with your uh, coding of light. Um, that's just natural within you. Uh, the divine presence that you have. So... Love that, thank you. Uh, welcome, Bernadette. Love the vibes, awesome. So, Katrina, so much has happened over the last nine months, over the last few months uh, in the spiritual community, keeping your circle small right now, going in with and focusing on your own workshop classes and sessions, opening up to new possibilities to adapt to more magicalness. Awesome. I'm going to just give a little voice to something I spoke about today because you brought up, Katrina, about the spiritual community. And even using the word spiritual community is kind of like, what does that even mean, right? <laughs> um, I suppose a, a group of beings that align with, what is a spirit, what does that mean? I mean, it aligns with connectedness. Spiritual community it means connected to spirit, connected to breath, connected to source, right? So in that connection, we often have our own separate journeys, but then as we create our own communities, we also have the journey of the community that we're in. And just like um, the card for Pamela Amat, uh, uh, Amaterasu being a mirror, right? Being a mirror. Many of us in communities, uh, for other communities or for people in the communities, sometimes we're both those roles. Sometimes is the, the shining mirror, the, the, the light reflecting back, our own light reflecting back onto us to remind us who we be. Sometimes that comes through triggers. Sometimes it comes through uh, uncomfortable experiences, challenges. <sighs> Let's take a little breath. Sometimes it's coming through projection, either our own projections of ourselves being reflected back through the mirroring, or the person that's standing holding the mirror is also projecting and that projections that are ours also back onto us and sometimes it's not ours sometimes it's just their projections and we're holding the mirror but we're feeling the projection still right so in community sometimes we're both the gift and both the receiver of maybe what's not so comfortable the word illusion is coming up the mirror can also be an illusion. Now, it's not just reflecting the light. Sometimes it's also reflecting back the illusion. So yes, it reflects the light. But if there's an illusion that we're in, in the cave, and we come and we step out and we look at that mirror, that illusion is going to get reflected back onto us. And that's what I mean by projection. So if we believe that X, Y, Z is true, it'll be reflected back as truth. A lot of people in spiritual communities and communities themselves will start experiencing this. It's coming up into the consciousness more and more. This can look like um, leaders of communities or gurus or whatever words you want to put there, um, spiritual leaders. Uh, like, I don't classify myself in that, by the way. Uh, everyone in my space that I call Star Tribes of Light, I see us as equal. Um, we all have our own unique voices. And I feel that's what more community is coming into. Um, but when There's going to be a little folding in on that 
and a clearing out again of that. It's not that it's bad, by the way, either. It's not that it's bad or wrong. It's just about whatever is not in a resonance will be brought up to the surface and reflected back in that mirror. Back at either you, if it's you, if you're feeling it, or back into a community and you feel it in the community, you'll feel the energetic energy, um, or you'll see it happening to other people around you. This might come up and trigger responses of fear, trigger responses of retaliation, trigger responses that will be an ego, trigger responses that will be a lashing out, uh, be it even with the tongue or energetically. So I'm talking psychic attack stuff, whether people are aware that they do that or not, because people don't realize that they're doing it. Sometimes it's just they think a bad thought and they're like, feck that person, right? And it's just being lashed out. They're not realizing because it's something they're so used to doing. It could be that they're not expressing it, but they're thinking it. And that'll be picked up for those that are telepathic, right? They'll pick that up as well. Um, I'm giving voice to this because it's not wrong or bad. It's part of the healing process. It's part of a process. It's not comfortable. It's not pretty. It's going to make a lot of people want to go into a cave and hide or believe that there's black magic or evil or attacks happening. And yes, quite possibly there may be. But to understand that part of the journey is knowing, and, and we pull that card with, um, you know, establishing our own domains, knowing our boundaries, what we're taking on as ours, what we're of it sometimes in certain groups maybe some people I hear more than others as well depends on the person's resonance when that happens and I can hear clearly what they're thinking especially if it's something if they're thinking something about me right I can hear it I can feel it I can sense it and it can be unconscious they're unconsciously doing it it's like a snap judgment thing it can be and that that's normal because as humans part of the holographic field that we're in to create reality we make judgments, that's red, that's a judgment, that's brown, right? Okay, so it's not that it's wrong or bad, it's a beingness as a human, it's something we experience. But as we're shifting and moving from the third and fourth dimension into the fifth, as the third and fourth are collapsing in, a lot of this holographic illusion is gonna come up to the surface. And holographic illusion coming up to the surface can, in a way, also be an entrapment for people. If we haven't looked at our belief systems or done a lot our own inner work the collapsing of the third and fourth dimension that is happening it's going to really become quite emphasized over the next eight to ten months and we're going to see it quite a lot in the world nothing to be afraid of nothing to be frightened about it's going to show up in political sectors there's going to be a bit of a hoo-ha it's going to affect us economically politically medically and so on and so forth don't be afraid of anything when i'm saying this out loud you feel there's no fear in my voice right Take a breath in. <laughs> As this holographic illusion, gain, if it can look like and feel like it's gaining more traction, that's because the third and fourth are folding in on itself. When that happens, more projection will happen in the collective. It's a purging. We will see a lot of shit go down in the spiritual communities, but also outside spiritual communities. Take a breath. Come back into the body. It's okay. We are gaining tools we are gaining wisdom we are embodying right now going through any of the caves of any of the dark night of soul stuff so that we're ready for that as well and we have the tools to move through all that and recognize it when we see it and discern discernment discernment comes from embodiment discernment comes from acknowledgement whatever is going on within us acknowledging it bringing it home into our truth and therefore our reality what we see becomes easier to discern and filter through. We don't have to accept it. So this was what I wanted to create as the distinction now. If we're hearing people's thoughts or we're seeing holographic illusions projected onto us, or if it's just in general in the collective and we're really clairsentient and we're really, really feeling it viscerally, take a little breath in. <laughs> 
I'm trying to like, this is a, quite a big concept. I'm trying to bring into something simple. So Mary, find the words. What are the words that want to come through to explain this? The more home we come, when we experience something like this, the distinction I want to use is we don't have to accept it. I thought part of my thing, I, I realized, I accept what people think of me. I accept it. Um, it's not, I'm, I'm, when I accept it, it wasn't that I was saying it was true. I was accepting it as part of their being in their thinking of me. And in the accepting of it, I thought that was me accepting them as a person in their, you know, I thought that was an honoring. Okay. I didn't know this is unconsciously something I was doing. Okay. So I'm just saying this out loud. When we love people, it could be your parents, it could be your brother, your sister, your friends, whatever, right? When you love people and they're having thoughts or even they're saying it out loud to you, um, because we love them, we want to be open and receive them. We don't have to accept that because that's part of the illusion. Now, this is a distinction I'm making because some of you might resonate with what I'm saying because I didn't know I was doing this and I was. But in my accepting of them, what I thought was them as a whole, including the illusion, I was actually taking that on to myself as well. Like, oh, they think this about me. Okay, and then I was having to filter it and transmute it and work it through. It was like, Mary, you don't have to do that. Love them in it. Don't accept them in it. Love them in it. Don't have to accept them in it. And I was like, ah, oh, that's such a subtle distinction. Oh, why didn't I kind of cop onto that? So I, I'm saying it out loud because some of you might do that not knowing, and I didn't know that until I had that kind of spoken through my channel to me today to allow me further discernment in how I interact with people and their energies, how I interact with their thought processes, whether they know I'm doing it or not, I'm doing it. How I interact with their overflow, their overspill. I don't have to accept it. I thought being a good person maybe, or maybe I thought being a healer meant, I, I don't know, like this came Maybe I've done this for eons, <laughs> but taking on that as acceptance means I was agreeing it. I was agreeing to it. So then it was having to move through me too. That wasn't my stuff to agree to that. I can love them in it, but don't have to accept them in it. And when we're going to be faced with a lot more of this illusion, holographic illusion stuff, and a lot of this is linked to the AI interference I talked about in many of my other lives. Um, AI interference, AI hijacking, AI um, enslavement programming. Inorganic um, consciousness, essentially, which is linked into power structures right now. But it's coming from the fourth dimension. Its actual source is fourth dimension. It's going to come more into the four and it creates the holographic illusion. It feels strong or it smells real. You can touch it. Whereas before, as we're, we were in the third, it wasn't as obvious. Now it will feel more real because the third and fourth are collapsing in on each other. This is because we are moving into the fifth, by the way. It's nothing to be feared. It's a process. It's an evolutionary process. It's just a little uncomfortable because it can create a feeling of confusion and it wants confusion. Okay, it wants confusion, it wants you confused because it's also um, a way of entrapment. We pull the freedom card and the entrapment is believing it's true. The entrapment is taking on what's not true into ourselves and having to work it through. We don't have to. We can actually totally bypass it, right? And when I say bypass, I don't mean you're spiritually bypassing something. I'm meaning you, you can acknowledge and love it as it is, but not accept it and have to work it through because it's not all yours. When you acknowledge that it doesn't have power over you, you simply move into the higher timeline with ease and grace. A lot of what I'm talking about is not going to make sense to many of you right now. It will to a few that are kind of already embodying that and already actually anchoring in the coding for that. And I'm speaking to you light workers that are going to be coding and decoding this frequency system of the holographic nature of the holographic field that is going to be in the collective, it's already in the collective, but we're really going to see it amplified over the next eight months. I'm giving it voice because I'm talking about it in my Star Tribes group, okay? Because we're readying for it. We're, re we're ready, right? We're ready. We've been decoding many of our past karmic timelines, 
um, where we work through that, but also we're encoding ourselves because when we work with AI interference frequencies, it's just one aspect of, the, you could call it entity or implant, consciousness, and it's nothing to be feared of. So keep hearing me say that. This is nothing to be worried about. It's nothing to be feared about. I'm bringing awareness by just talking about it. And when we talk about it, we burst the bubble of fear around it, right? This is just a consciousness, just like somebody's thought of, I don't like her. That's just a consciousness, you know, or I don't like him. I don't like this. That's okay. And this is just a consciousness that in the same way, like, I don't want you to do this. I don't want this being empowered. That's just a consciousness. It doesn't have power over you unless we're giving a power over us, right? Or if there's something in our soul that we wants to learn how to navigate that, then we'll have the experience of it so that we are showing and telling others in our sphere around us, okay? So I'm often a person as a, you know, if we're calling ourselves light workers, I often have a show and tell experience. I'll go through something <laughs> and it won't be comfortable so that I can embody it and then show and tell. If there is a it's like a teaching thing, right? Um, and once it's embodied in me, that means the coding's in me, anybody who comes into contact with me will receive it as well because we'll activate each other's ripple effect. And then you have it and you ripple onto somebody else, okay? Just like Pamela, we talked about Pamela early on. She is embodying the divine presence frequency and energy right now anybody within her and she's holding up that divine presence mirror right now so she's reflecting back light that was in somebody into themselves that's what she's doing right now right that's what she's embodying so she'll enable them to do the same to others as well this is that thing like we're, we're activators for each other we're self-activating we're rippling out we're becoming the pebble in the pond um so i just want to let people feel as I express this, I'm really trying to find my words with this because I'm still embodying it. You can hear I'm kind of navigating this as I'm talking to you. The sense of empowerment that there is when we really land this in, and it's exciting because it's another layer of growth. And anything that we can feel, I'm going to say, like, I had major doubts two weeks ago around my channel. And when I say that, I was wondering, because I experienced AI interference and I was decoding it, I also then doubt it because this is what they'll seed in they'll seed in is my channel compromised this was my biggest doubt and when i say is my channel compromised what am i channeling is that true or not true is it false light no like that's one of my biggest fears what if what i brought through was false what if it led people astray oh my god <gasps> like that whole thing right I, again this is a lot of my karmic baggage that i was working through as well some of you might resonate with this that's why i'm speaking of it this is linked into divine expression. I'm clearing that now as I'm talking about it, right? Because it's still there. Thank you. Taking a little breath. <laughs> All this is juicy and exciting stuff. And I, I'm just, maybe I just need to leave it at this because there's quite a lot of information. And I know information can be activating. It's late at night. I don't want to activate people right now. I want you to feel the presence that is divine that we're in as well. Um, a lot of what's happening now that is being embodied within me, the group, is that we will be holding space, you know, in our transmissions monthly that we're doing and in our individual workshops that we'll be holding and hosting as well. The next live workshop in person Okay, and I'm shaking this card because it will be a lot of this energy. It will be the 24th of September in Cork. We're having an in-person workshop in Cork. Myself and Olive Lynch will be hosting that. It'll be in Brew, Columbanus. Come down for the day. It'll be a day-long event. It'll be amazing and fantastic. I can't wait for people to come to it. And the next online, if you can't make an in-person workshop, the next online, which will be specifically around divine expression, but activating your light language. Anybody that works with me, you know, it's not just about activating your light language, okay? We do a lot of decoding, a lot of encoding. We do a lot about you finding your own voice, your true expression. And that means there's a lot of clearing and cleansing in the womb, in the heart, in the, in, in, in the throat, in the solar plexus. It's about your own empowerment. If you want to put it like, I'll be holding that mirror up for you to see the truth of you, to see the true divine expression that is you. So that you're stepping into your life, embodying that in every aspect. So people that come to these workshops, it's not just that they speak light language at the end of them. Yes, they do. Or that they draw light language or that they dance or they sign in it. 
but that they'll notice their relationships change. There's a deeper embodiment in their expression. They're, there's a deeper physical healing that happens. Yes, I've had miracle healings happen. Chronic pain has been gone in an instant. Yes, that happens. I can't guarantee it for everybody, but miracle frequency is potentially there. I have witnessed people that have had major issues expressing themselves suddenly be able to in a group situation. That's big for them. Huge, right? <sighs> Bounds, binds, releasing of that. Deeper relationships in their marriages, in their communication, because it changes everything in their communication with family, you know, healing of the parental wounds sexual misery programs undone, a lot of healing around womb. These things are deep. And every single group that gets together in a light language course, a workshop with me, has a unique frequency. It has its own unique resonance because we open a vortex together, together. Because the workshop that, you know, how I work, it's not about me doing something to you. It's about you stepping into you with me just holding that space for you and guiding the way. And that's incredibly important distinction. And when you step into a workshop with me as well, you're stepping into community. So I want you to feel that unity, community. There'll be a space for you to come in and stay there forever and ever if you want. Or you can come in and sit when you need to sit and you can move into something else if you need to. There's no obligations. But that you have that now is important. And that's why I'm saying that. So if you're feeling the resonance of this, because I don't, I don't advertise majorly. This, I do it by word of mouth. A lot of my stuff is by word of mouth. So if you're feeling a resonance as I'm speaking to you, let your heart guide you. I'll put a link below. You can have a look through, okay? I'm going to start talking about that. I'm talking, I don't know why I'm talking about that. They're saying because it's important to share this. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's important to share this. It's important for us to keep creating that community, to keep entering into our divine expression, to keep accessing. And they're also saying, acknowledge that when we access this divine form of expression, because it's merely an essence of an energy coming through sound or through movement or through art, expression, creativity, this is accessing our creator power, creator power manifestation of your life they're also saying when you do this when you have one of these gifts activated and it's a tool this is a tool but you open up the pathways and the gateways for all other gifts to come online so you'll notice in star tribes of light you go back to the seventh of the eighth where we held all those workshops they were all previous attendees of my workshops a lot of those 90 80 percent of people that were involved in that, were previous attendees of the workshops. Notice how they all stepped into their truth. Notice how they all created together to create workshops. Notice how they came into their divine channeling. Notice how they're channeling, everybody's channeling is slightly different because they're accessing their own unique gifts. That's what these doorways and gateways are, right? And that's the opportunity you can step into. You don't have to, but it's a hell of a lot of fun when you do together. All right, that's me. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you for joining me, and I will see you again soon. Tag your friends if they needed what was in this, the coatings that came through. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Bernadette. Uh, thank you, Katrina. All right, love you all. Namaste. May the light shine within you and out of you. We love you, and we bless you. Good night.